Welcome to the latest episode of CHB TV. Tonight we're going to talk about a number of topics. We're going to start off chatting about Henrik Sedin and his record-setting night. Talk a little bit about Manny Malhotra ending up on the injured reserve and segueing right into Kessler and his return on Friday night. We're going to wrap it up talking a little bit about music and you may get to see one of us sing. Welcome to the third episode of Canucks Hockey Blog TV, also known by the vernacular of CHB TV. As always, we have myself, Chris Golden, joined by Ed Lau, Clay Emo, and joining us today here at the Hog Shack is Alan. Look at him. I know. <laughs> Talk about self-promotion. See that? You got a self-promoter last time, but this... This is pretty good. Yeah, you know what? He's got an actual shirt with yeah, him. Yeah. Hopefully right, we'll be able man. to, you know, keep this this a little bit more, you know, <laughs> low energy. Um, and for all those out there hoping for more streaking, it won't happen today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, since the last time we got together, and the Canucks have obviously been playing well, we've seen quite a bit happen, uh, both on the ice and off the ice. And then one of the things I thought we'd, you know, just jump into is just what we saw on... Uh, on Friday night there, and that was, uh, you know, Henrik Sedin passing Nasland uh, for being the top point getter of uh, of all time with the Canucks. Although, I mean, arguably, maybe Daniel catches up now because you know how they compete. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't tell you how awesome it was to be part of the moment, be part of the crowd, standing for, was it three minutes? Oh, you were there. You were there. there. Yeah, right? yeah, me like, and Chris were there. Was, oh, you were there. I was here. I was yeah. here. And I was, um, yeah. yeah. You got the... You know the two two points he needed to go tie yeah. and go above, but that that third period, like after the three fights, yeah. which I've never seen before, I've yeah. never seen yeah. fight after fight after fight when you got the whole fourth line trying to hang out yeah. in the dressing room, but something just disappeared. The Canucks were no longer mm -hmm. skating well. Um, they were coughing up the puck. Yeah, things fell apart pretty quickly. Did you have the game on here? Oh yeah. People go crazy. Oh yeah. Did they yeah. stand up for three minutes after the goal? <laughs> well, I did, right? Did. Oh, I did. I was screaming. I had no voice. I mean, it got to the point yeah. where, I, you know, near to the three minutes, I'm like, ice it, throw it over the yeah. uh, boards, take a penalty, freeze the puck, go offside, because my voice was going, my hands were getting tired, yeah. you know, the, I was standing, getting bumped around. Yeah. Uh, it was not to take away from it, but I really wanted to, to be able to celebrate. Very memorable. The, and Ed, you were saying before that we came on that your dad got tired oh, of yeah. clapping. I was getting tired. Let's not talk about my dad. I was getting tired. There's, there's a lot of people that weren't as into it, but yeah. you know what? For the most part, it was the loudest I've heard Rogers in a regular season game. Oh, good. Good qualifier. Regular season game. So, <laughs> back to Henrik. Okay. Um, you know, is this a record for his, him to hold? Or do you think Daniel actually catches up to him? I think, if, as long as there's no injuries uh, in stake here, I think uh, it's going to be his. Yeah, I agree. Statistically, just they're basically point per game. Are they pretty equal? I don't know exactly. Um, I think I think Daniel might have a slight edge only because he's missed um, right. quite a few more games. And it extrapolates right. out to 30 or 40 games, That's roughly. Right. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Alan. I just don't think... Yeah, they're so close. So we're, we're like splitting yeah, hairs. They play on the same line, just so you know. So. Well, I, <laughs> did you, fair enough. Fair enough. So you're saying that uh, it's Hanks. Yes. Thanks. Agree. Thanks. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say Daniel. <laughs> okay. Only because I like to stir the pot. Fair enough. Um, and my my logic on this actually has to do more with the fact that Daniel shoots the puck. Yeah. And there's a greater chance that that puck gets to his stick from someone other than Henrik. Mm -hmm. And whereas with Henrik, he's going to get his points through those, those apples. Yep. Okay, fair enough. So. I would just love for Henrik to just last two years of his career he just turns into some shooting fiend and he just lights it up for 40 or 35 you know, in a year you know career. why that'll happen the last two yeah because the fiends will just switch jerseys <laughs> <laughs> I swear they do that sometimes well I don't know if they've switched jerseys but there's a story that goes on to say I think it was either last season or two years ago where on a face off or on ice yes. uh, Daniel was stuck on the ice Henrik was off yeah. and they switched. they switched and the referees didn't know yeah, oh, didn't know yeah. wow yeah. I've also I, I'm almost sure I've seen the Sedins pull like Dan, uh, Henrik gets waved out and he just does a little round with yeah, Henrik yeah. with comes, Dan comes uh, right back. Henrik gets waved out yes. Yes. he comes right back with, yeah. with Daniel and Henrik comes right back to the face yeah. oh okay and then they just like 
All right. <laughs> you, know, for that. you know, all we're doing is we're, we're, we're finding food for all the Canucks trolls out there. We're going to say, oh, look at those, yeah. you know, cheating such and such. I mean, they don't do any of those things. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're just bloggers. What are we doing? <laughs> um, one thing, so, they, one person they won't be confused for is Manny Mahotra. No, and... <laughs> like that? Yeah, that's a good segue. Thank, segue. Thank you. <laughs> so, Manny, Manny's, Manny's obviously... Uh, Not done, obvious at all. ...done for the season on the injured reserve, and um, his going on to the shelf coincided with Kessler's return and on Friday night but uh, you know with Manny do you think he's done? Um, I I think for him to compete at the level that the Canucks want to compete at and the Canucks are an elite team um, I don't think he's he's uh, he's going to be able to be as effective as he, as he used to be uh, he might bring value I know he's got a year left I believe on his contract um, he might bring value to another team that's either developing with younger players and he has a leadership uh, mm-hmm. the leadership role he's a great guy in the dressing room from what I hear um, he completes the you know the uh, the camaraderie between the yeah. players uh, and that's something that I know that's been you know uh, a, big, a big role that he's played um, awesome in the face off but just has not been overly effective uh, this season so far and I believe it has been a, a tough process for Mike Gillis to get to this point where he's had to make a decision uh, with Kessler being back and do we keep Mark Ultra, uh, you know, in the starting lineup or put him on the IR? And I, I believe it's the right decision to make, uh, just because you know this is a business. The Canucks are here to win a cup, yep. and, and you know, business is business, and, and hopefully that doesn't. Uh, uh, you know, I hope Ultra, I think Mark Ultra is a humble guy as well, and, and I think he'll take that. Uh, uh, obviously, he still wants to compete, still wants to play. Where he ends up, I, I'm not sure. Business is business, spoken like a true business owner. That's right. But, I mean, if it, if it truly is a business, is this a business decision? Or is this a decision that was made be out of the well-being of a, a you know, player who was potentially going into harm's way? You know, way? I'm going to sound totally like a Canucks shell here, but I I really believe Mike Gillis. Everything that's happened, Mike Gillis is not the most exciting guy to listen to mm-hmm. or, you know, and he may, it not, might not be conventional in a lot of his dealings, but I do believe him to be an honest person. And when he comes out and says that they asked him to retire they talked about it in the off season and Manny said give me 10 games right give me the summer to, yeah. to get better yeah. and give me 10 games give me a quarter of the season they gave him his 10 games yeah. and apparently it sounds like they went to him and they whether I don't know how mutual it was but I believe Mike Gillis when he says the reason was he found Manny in too many vulnerable positions I truly believe that well I just in my mind like and again I, I, I don't know anything more than anyone else but when it comes <laughs> about to well, yeah. Yeah. I mean when it comes to Manny I mean if he's if he put himself in harm's way and you know he's a danger to himself on the ice. I think the team has an obligation to take him off of it. Um, obviously, him going back onto the IR, I sort of agree with the question as to what's different today that wasn't different, you know, at the start of this season or even at some point throughout last season. And right. You could say sure he needed that opportunity to train, he needed mm-hmm. the opportunity to, to to rehab or do whatever he needed to do to, to see about getting more of his vision back. But why such a long period of time? Like I, again. At the end of the day, it's it's his health that's that's at risk. Yeah, take him off. I've got no issue with that. Um, but then, also, I, I look at where Manny is, and what's not to say that he doesn't necessarily agree with this decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wouldn't mm-hmm. wouldn't the team be better off, you know, looking for an opportunity elsewhere? get something back okay, I don't know why not go and work with him unless I mean again we don't know maybe that's what they did I mm. it's just I so, say, yeah it's 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 so gray as to, to what yeah. truly went on I mean he went all of a sudden disappeared after super skills goes on a person right you know, a personal leave and it's only been a week right super skills was a week ago so you know what this, yeah. this might have been something that's been kind of brewing for some time True. Uh, like you said um, I think they gave him they gave Manny uh, the courtesy of you know he'd be a chance to, to play your best and see if he can still uh you know, play well on the ice, and, yeah. and just because he's such a good character guy in the dressing room, no one wanted to give up on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but someone had to come in, and, and it's a big, big uh, Michael Gillis, and and he had to make that decision to say this. And um, again, business decision. That's what I see it as. He was part of the game day skate today. He was on the ice with the team, and I mean, hmm. he's, if he's on IR, he has every right to be there. Right. I, I, I truly want to see him stay. I mean, if this was his absolutely, last, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last season, uh, I want to stay with the team and you know, coaching capacity of some sort. Like sure. I, 
I, I love what he brings. I mean, all the stories you hear about him off the ice and how he's been involved in the community, um, out building playgrounds, uh, him and his family. Um, hearing a story about how uh, in New York after being out for dinner, and Mike Gillis tells a story how you know his first interaction with Manny Malhotra was like, hey, where'd Manny go? And there he was, you know, not only uh, talking to a, a homeless person, but ended up giving the, the, the guy some cash to, to help him out. You know, young players doing that. Maybe yep. that has something to do with the fact that Gretzky took him under his wing in New mm. York. And, and some of that, you know, really was ingrained with him. But, I mean, you look at the Canucks, and he's probably one of the most outstanding citizens. Yes, absolutely. And, that, and that's why I think he's, uh, you know, he was given that chance for quite some time. And, and, and for the Canucks organization to be patient with him and to give him that chance. And, and you know, that's just hats off to him for being that kind of guy, right? So, Manny cool. out, yep. Kessler in. Yes. Yeah. What do you guys think of Kessler on Friday? I think he had a great game. Good on the faceoff. Uh I played. I think he thought he played really, really well for a first mm-hmm. game back. Really fast um, and, and hitting. Yeah. So I mean, the fear is yes. not there. Where oh, you know, I'm injured. I might get myself injured again. He played. Uh, he played really, really, really well. Better than I thought he, he should. Well, had a lot of jump for a guy that just came back. Yeah, yeah. you guys were both there live. Yeah. So well, well I, I remember like he definitely had a lot of jump. And I, it, yeah. it's funny how if AV was like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna limit his minutes <laughs> by only playing him on the second <laughs> line. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. First uh, pairing of the yeah. power play. He's hungry for the puck um, all the time. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember that his first. First one timer, he completely flopped. You could tell the timing wasn't there. And then I think it was the second one that he run right yeah. off Lettinen's mask. Mm. And it brought such a, a different yeah. dimension to the power play. Yeah. Like our power play, it's no secret that our power play hasn't been very good, but it's it brought an extra weapon that we don't have. Mm. There's not a whole lot of slap shot guys yeah. on the Canucks amongst the forwards. They're all sort of wristers, sort of mis- uh, redirector sort of goal scorers. Kessler brings like another sort of weapon to the entire, the well, entire thing. There was, I think, I'm trying to think, it would have been in the third period, there was one point. Where, where Kessler tried to, you know, take it through the in, entire, you know, blue line. Yeah. So I'm going to split you guys, catch yeah. up, and try to hold me back. Now, obviously, yeah. doesn't yeah, and, that's, and that's a confidence thing, especially yes. coming off an injury for that mm-hmm. long. It's either, uh, you know, nine out of ten times a guy comes in, and, and, and it's, and it's oh, I need a couple of games, and the coach gave him a couple of games to get back in the form, but he felt like, well, he looked like he felt like he was confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was able to maybe co- even cause some damage, score a couple of goals last game. So, so is that the uh, energy of, I'm back on the ice, I'm going to let it loose, or is this something that... We're gonna see, you know. I hope it's the same. It's really inter- Chicago. You know, it's funny. Leading up to these games, his return wasn't it funny how Vigneault was always the one saying he's ready, and and then and then <clears throat> Kessler would be saying, "Oh, baby steps. Oh, I gotta be sure. I don't want to rush back." But then he comes back, and you're right, Chris. He you played like he wasn't even injured. Well, but think about it. Every time AV has gone and made a comment, yeah. where, oh, he's got to use his line mates more. Yeah. And when Kessler hears that, he gets like pissed off. There's a significant <laughs> chip that just shows up on his shoulder, and then he proceeds to score, you know, yeah. 40 goals. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I, I think it's just yeah, his complete point. level is very high. So he comes in. Uh, it's a shortened season. He's got to make an impact right away. He's got uh, Jordan Schrader there. Uh, Mike Tail, who's uh, <laughs> right behind his tail there, who's also performing really well, and we're lucky to have him uh, you know, perform as well as he has since, since coming up from the AHL. Um, it's just exciting to, to, to have Kessler back, and, and you know what, I'm happy with, with his last game, and uh, we'll see how he plays tonight. So, we'll other, time. other topic to sure. Oh, I know what it was. Songs. Yeah, I know. So, you guys all know that the Canucks are looking for a potential skate out on the ice song. Yep. And uh, they have a number that were up there. There was one from the Japan Droids. Um, There's some techno. Techno, yeah. Um, but right now, the two that are currently leading the pack on online voting are Nickelback's Burn It to the Ground and Guns N' Roses' Welcome to the Jungle. Now, <clears throat> before I'm, we talk about this, can I throw in my Nickelback joke? Because it was my son Sean's and he loves it. I think you saw it on Facebook. Sure. What, what concert only costs 45 cents to watch? Uh, 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 Nickelback. 50 Cent <laughs> featuring Nickelback. <laughs> Come on. And folks, uh, that's <laughs> this is GHB TV forever. That's good. That's a good joke. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Chris, for the long. You're going to poke fun at Nickelback. I actually like Nickelback. I'm probably the only person who comes out publicly to say that. But even I, who loves the tune mm-hmm. and enjoys their music, would be the first to say, "Burn it to the ground" as a Vancouver Canucks song? Yeah. Is, is there not a parallel here that people might be conferring? <laughs> Could yeah. be happening? Yeah. Not the safest wrong, wrong pick. Wrong song choice. Wrong yes. song choice. You were talking about 
an oldie, but a goodie. I am, yes. Uh, Hell's Bells ACDC is a song that I think were perfect. You know, I had, I've had i had season tickets uh, for the Canucks for about 10 years. Uh, I give, unfortunately, I gave them up last year, but, uh, um, you know, I was there for a lot of the games, and yeah. the U2 song was, was a staple there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that vibe, that energy, you gotta get a good track in there for sure for the opening sequence there. I like Hell's Bells, ACDC, that's the song that I just came up with. What do you think, Clay? Gangnam Style? <laughs> well, Gangnam Style is not my, <laughs> not my not my thing, nor is Harlem Shake. Okay, oh, this is, I feel oh, sick man. now. Okay, and then... Uh, we just lost our entire audience. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I, ACDC, not my thing. I, I'm sure, I listen to Christian music, but that's probably not the best um, best pump rocker song. I was thinking, you know the song that the Chicago, the Chicago Bulls came out to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, kind of cool. Is yeah. that what it is? I don't even I know the name. I think it's called Serious. And I don't know the... the dun, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. but the way they do it. But the one I was thinking about, and it was and inspired by listening to the Team 1040 a couple days ago, uh, Phil Collins in the air tonight. They kept playing that... <laughs> <laughs> And then start with the fast part, right? Coming, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Something in the air. Then that that big drum roll by Phil Collins. And <laughs> here come the Canucks. In my head right come now. on, That's think genius. about it. Yeah, yeah. Or okay, yeah. or okay. Think I'm about gonna, it. Or Genesis. Or, or Genesis. Genesis. You know, you got the land of confusion. Yep. yep. Um, I I actually there's there's two two songs. Well, one one song. Um, Hell yeah by Rev Theory, mm-hmm. um, which you know I just really I find you know really gets me fired up. Yep. Uh, or anything from the Top Gun soundtrack. Take, take, take my breath away take the great drive. Yeah, yeah. No, that would that get me out for sure. Yeah, yeah. she's lost that love and feeling. Yeah. No, but like um, <laughs> Mighty Wings, Danger Zone, um, maybe not the anthem. Mm-hmm. Although if we're going to go with the Chicago Bulls entrance, then maybe that would work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to find all these and I'm going to you know, link them on. Link them. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, personally, I, do I'm a poll. Okay. Do a poll on, on your website. Do a poll. Yeah. Personally, I'm totally okay with... Because I feel like the, the U2 song is... It's so appropriate for us. It's, it is. It's, 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 it's been there for so long. None of those songs, like we heard the techno song the other day. Mm-hmm. It's no. It's all right. And to be honest, I find the Nickelback song is very appropriate for the Canucks. But I'll be damned if the Canucks are going to be introduced by Nickelback. Like that's that just sounds wrong. Well, it's not that like they're going to be there every game to do it live. Well, I don't. And it's not that. <laughs> I, don't, I have no issue with it being Nickelback. It's the one song, "Burn It to the Ground." Yeah. 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 But it, we we're, we're just setting ourselves up for, for some jokes there. Yeah. 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 Well, some, some, many, yeah. many, many jokes. Like right now, there's Boston Bruins fans logging into Canucks.com with their email address. They're, they're voting the ground, for that song. Ground, yeah, that's the, the only ground. reason why yeah. Nickelback's up there. Personally, I, I'm okay with with whatever because we only hear it once. I, I've been lobbying for years to hear the Shawn Michaels intro dun, dun, song dun, 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 as our goal cool song. Dun, 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 dun. Think about it; it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> put it in there. Don't sing it, please. What? Oh. What? Do I not have the voice that you like in your uh, your videos? <laughs> Is that why you have not given me an invite to a music video? Next, video? cannot play composition. Your interest. We're, we're Whatever you a, want, brother. Let's well, form a boy band, guys. Well, you know, we totally speaking of boy bands, going on here. Yeah. Alan we're used to be in one, but we can talk about that next time. Let's do something. Let's do something. All right. So I'm going to explain how this works. Uh, last time. I lost, so these drinks were on me. Thanks for the coke. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> we're, all, we're all designated drivers today, so we're no beers. Today. Hey, I had a virgin rum and coke. <laughs> so this is how it's gonna work. We're gonna predict the final score, the uh, for tonight, the, the winning team. Yes. Ooh. And we'll do something random. What do you guys think this time? Uh, a tiebreaker. How about time of the first penalty? Who fights? Who fights? Time of the first penalty. Yeah, oh, that's too specific. That's so specific. First penalty. Who gets the first? Who gets the first? Okay, yeah. there you go. So Who we'll start first? with uh, Chris. Okay. okay, so Canucks win. Chris Tanev gets a goal. Oh, and no, no, we're not doing goal scorer again. We're... Chris Tanev gets the first penalty, <laughs> and I'm gonna go four two Canucks. All right. I don't know if we are the ones to give Chicago their first regulation mm-hmm. loss. Uh, he but is at cannot play on Twitter. <laughs> but yeah. but we will you, give them their emails. another shootout overtime loss. So I'm going to Canucks 3-2. The first penalty will go to uncharacteristically Patrick Kane. Is that it? 3-2 Canucks, Patrick Kane with the first Canucks penalty. Patrick yeah. Alan? Canucks take it 2-1 in overtime. I say it'll be a close game. I know that much. Um, I say Bieksa gets the, the first penalty. Bieksa. Hooking penalty. Bieksa. 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 Hooking. Yeah. Interesting. That's what I say. That's and uh, let's see. I'm going to go with the Canucks win... 5-4 in a shootout. 
four goals piece. It's not unlikely with these two teams. Who gets the shootout winner? <laughs> Chris <laughs> Tanev. <laughs> and uh, the first penalty will go to... I'm going to call Jonathan Taves. Because oh. did you see his fight with uh, Joe Thornton the other day? Bad. That goal. guy got angry all of a sudden. Bad. For no reason. He like, wanted to fight. Yeah. Just Bad. Wanted to fight Joe Look Thornton at that. For some the so two I'm going with that. 5-4, so Vancouver, Jonathan Taves. So any, uh, any final words? Um, I just remember last time we talked a little bit about streaking. We had uh, our guests kind of do it. Alan, we're not going to make you do anything like that. But what? Well, we also talked about uh, if Minnesota finishes six or higher, that I would have to do something like that. Oh yeah, not even close. The Minnesota, they're not going to finish the higher than ten. But I'm not. I'm not saying that is the bet. I think I'm pretty safe right now. Oh, well, these guys coming with Canucks jerseys is awesome. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huh? Any last words? Uh, you know I. Uh, just talking about what we talked about earlier. I hope Manny Mahot, uh, you know, just good luck to him for sure. Um, and hopefully Kessel can can get it back in the midst of things and just kind of keep his mask for us. So, um, That's right. I'm excited to, to watch a nice game. Cool. Good. Uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought of anything, so I'm just good now. So. Take it home, brother. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Okay, now we're yeah, now now we've definitely lost our Yeah, it's true. But for two of you who really like my voice and blue eyes, thanks for coming out to tonight's episode of CHP TV. We'll see you again in a couple weeks. As always, we'll be here at the Hot Shack filming. And one of the things we want to make sure that you're all aware of is you could be here with us. If you think you got what it takes, let us know. You can reach any of us on Twitter. You can contact us at chp at canuckshockeyblog.com. That is chb at canuckshockeyblog.com. Or alternatively, leave a comment either on uh, the post here on CHB or on our YouTube feed. Again, thanks for coming out. CHB TV out. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right. So good. Uh, so once again, we are hosted by the Hog Shack in here in beautiful Steveson. Uh, as you can see, the game is on right behind me. Can you see it, Chris? Oh yeah. The game right behind me. Yeah. Uh, so. This is a great place to watch the game, enjoy some wings, uh, pulled pork, and one of the many, 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 many craft beers on tap and in bottles. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you if you want a place to watch the game, come down to the Hog Shack.